Hello everybody and welcome back to the coolest, oh look Thompson, dog training channel right here on YouTube. I'm Tom Davis, America's canine educator. Hey, thank you so much for joining me here today. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been here for a while, thank you for your loyalty. Look guys, the dog training industry is confusing as hell. I agree with that 100%. I get confused all the time of all this stuff that's going on. It's like, he said this, she said this, what book to read, what collar to use, what leash to use. I'll be the first to tell you, I don't know everything either. I'm just trying to give you guys as much information as I possibly can to help you and your dog. And with that being said, as a dog trainer or even a dog owner, just realize that you have to do what feels right for you and your dog. If you're reading something or you're watching training or you're doing something in training that just doesn't make sense to you, don't do it. It's that simple. You have now moving forward from that, I have recently had an epiphany of like, holy crap, this information, like I said in the beginning of the video is like, boom. so I want to talk about it. We're going to dive right into it. I have an online training facility and I usually work on that two to three hours, Monday through Friday, every single day before I come into the facility to work with my trainers, my boarding trains, and of course my clients. And recently while filming and recording a podcast session with one of my online sessions, I basically was like, wait a minute. So this girl was having a problem with her dog and she was really conflicted on her dog barking at people at the door. All right, really quick guys, before we continue this video, do me a solid like this video and I want you to leave a comment down below right now, pause the video and let me know what kind of dog you have. It doesn't have to be purebred, what kind of mix do you have? Do me a solid, subscribe to my YouTube channel, turn on your notification bell so you don't miss away any of the giveaways that we do on here. I give away bundle packs of the No Bad Dog merch, stuff like this. So do that right now and I'll wait. Okay, thank you guys so much, I appreciate it. So I was having that conversation with my online client. She was talking about my dog is barking at the door. My dog is chasing squirrels. My dog is barking at people inside the car. Now you would think, yeah, and? And so basically what I came to realize is, is I started to catch on to a lot of the clients recently. And I just, again, like the, I try to learn every day. I try to sharpen my tools and get better at what I do every single day for the dog's sake. If I'm not getting better then I'm staying stagnant and I hate that. So for me, when I started gathering this information over the last couple of weeks, I think just maturity and experience, I started to, to, to look at things through a different lens and realize certain scenarios and I'm able to then distribute it in a different way I never have before. She's like, well, the, the, how is the training? You know, the training isn't working. I'm very frustrated with the training. And this is something everybody deals with, every dog owner, every trainer. And I just literally just came, came to the surface and it clicked. I'm like, wait a minute. You actually think that your dog is supposed to act this way all the time. Your dog is actually supposed to act trained all the time. Your dog is supposed to walk very nicely on a leash all the time. Your dog is not supposed to get excited when you come in the door. Your dog is not supposed to bark at things they feel like they need to bark at. <laughs> Hold the phone. Let me just help you out right now and get away a lot of that frustration that you're having with your dog. Dogs are not robots. The training starts when you apply the training. The training isn't universally, robotically into the dog. That's the way they have to act. If your dog pulls on a leash, that doesn't mean they're not trained. If your dog jumps on somebody, that doesn't mean they're not trained. If your dog gets excited and barks at somebody out, that doesn't mean, the training starts inside voices versus outside voices. Let me give you a perfect example of that. You're a kid in a car or you're a parent with kids in the car. You're on your way to Disney. The kids are really excited, but they know they can't act a certain way in the car, inside voices versus outside voices. They get to Disney, they go crazy. They go nuts, right? Inside voices versus outside voices. We know that you want to act this way during this time and that's okay, you're a kid. Hey, guess what? You're a dog. You're allowed to bark. You're allowed to pull. You're allowed to get excited. You're allowed to whatever. It doesn't, you know what I mean? That, that's my point is it just kind of came to me that a lot of my clients recently and probably for the last year, couple of years have been like, oh, I, you know, my dog is still doing this and still doing that. And that's not training. That has nothing to do with your dog getting excited because your significant other, your kids, your family member came over doesn't mean your dog isn't trained. That's innate, that's primal. You're never gonna take that away from them. You're never gonna tell a fish not to swim. Uh, your, your golden retriever is, is at, the, at, at the door and dad comes home and they get excited. Oh, I can't, I, why do they get so excited? We've been through training, we've done this, we've done. That's not training. The training starts when you then try to apply your training to that certain scenario or behavioral 
situation. And I'm here to tell you and end a lot of the frustration you're having. It's when you say, okay, buddy, hold my hand across the parking lot with your kids. It's when you say, okay, you're in Disney World, do whatever the heck you want, go crazy, eat candy, I don't care. But when we come home, you gotta listen to me. You gotta hold my hand, you gotta pay attention, you gotta go to bed on time, you gotta wake up for school, etc. That's the same thing as a dog. Like if they're pulling on the leash, like my dogs go, if, if I wanna walk my dogs, and they want to go out for a walk and they've been in their crates because I've had a crazy day with meetings and whatever and I let them out, I'm going to let them pull me all the way and then all the way back. That's not not training. That's not my dogs aren't trained. And when people are looking at me like, wow, those dogs are crazy. Pulling, and I'm like, no, no, no. The training starts when I go, hey, heel, let's go. And they boom and they get right into place and they walk beautifully loose leash no matter how long I want them to walk. And that's where the training starts. So if your dog is barking at the door, your dog is pulling on the leash, your dog is still doing some of these behaviors, you're not training to take that away. You're not training for those to never exist anymore. That's unrealistic and unfair and ultimately gonna create a lot of frustration in your relationship with your dog. And for an example, if we did a board and train with your dog and we spent two weeks on regular basic obedience and you walked out that door and you didn't say break or heal or anything to tell the dog, this is what I want you to do, and they pulled you, has no infliction on us, has no infliction on the dog. It just means that you didn't prepare the dog or tell the dog what you want them to do. They know what to do, they know how to act, they know what you want them to do, you just didn't apply it. So because your dog is doing these things does not mean that they're not trained. So anyway guys, stop being so hard on yourselves, being so hard on your dogs, making sure that you're able to tell your dog what they can and can't do and that they listen to that. If your dog gets on the couch, you tell them to get off and they get off, great. Um, if your dog gets on the couch and then doesn't get off, that's a problem. That's where you need to start training. Same thing with healing your dog. If your dog's pulling on the leash and you can't go, okay, I, I need you to pay attention. I need you to focus because we're getting into an environment where I want you to heal and they can't. That's where the you need, this, you need to work on that. But just because a dog is doing these things does not mean they're not trained and, and stop being so frustrated with that. You're not going to take that away. You just need to be able to apply certain rules and structure just like kids like be a kid. I don't want. I don't want to decompress you of being excited and running outside in recess and playing kickball and being afraid to yell because I told you you couldn't yell inside. It has nothing to do with that. It's like I need to tell you what you can and can't do, and you need to listen to me because it's going to make our life less frustrating. And but more importantly, it's going to keep you safe both mentally and of course physically. And so my point is, guys, there's a lot of stuff going on in the dog training world. Who's right? Who's wrong? Blah 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 blah. Do what works for you guys. Don't be so hard on yourselves. Dogs are not robots, they're not computers. Remember that, train when you can train, making sure that you're applying your training in the scenarios that you need and not trying to decompress your dog to be like a perfect dog all the time to make sure that the dog understands clearly what you want and that you can apply it when you need it. It doesn't apply all the time. Dogs are not computers. We cannot program a certain way within reason. So anyway guys, don't be frustrated with it. I know it's a confusing place for a dog owner and dog trainers or anybody that just wants information. Just remember that if you want to train a certain way, that's completely fine. Everybody has their right to train certain ways. I respect everybody's opinion. I respect everybody's uh, ability to train dogs in different ways. That's totally cool. And dog owners and people out there on the, on the internet worlds, just remember that do what works for you. Just because somebody is doing something differently than what you're doing or they don't believe, that's okay. The dog world is one of those things that we're so emotional about mainly because we love our dogs so much. And if we see something that we don't understand or we're not agreeing with, we automatically as assume to attack things and we automatically assume that the world is falling apart and oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? Everybody has their own way of doing things and it's okay. We need to, we need to understand that that's fine, respect it, uh, everybody has their ways. But anyway guys, if you haven't yet, don't forget, like, subscribe to my channel, turn on your notification bell, and I'm gonna be dropping these videos all the time. Now, this is something that doesn't really have to do with me actually teaching a dog something, so if it's something that you actually are, are interested in and you like this one-on-one -on -one stuff, leave a comment and let me know. So anyway, guys, I'm gonna get back to training. Uh, I appreciate you guys uh, listening and watching. Again, if you haven't yet, like, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment below, let me know what type of dog you have, and I hope this information was valuable. Um, I will talk to you next time. Peace.